decided I was going to make a dash for it, and I raised up and turned to go, and wham! I just felt this shock hit me, and uh, it just... It's kind of like an electrical shock. It's just this numbing sort of thing, and I was just unconscious. But the guy said that this a, a blast of energy come out of the bottom of this thing, and it just lit up the whole area, just just almost blinding. And they said it just picked me up and threw me back through the air. And they they said my body went so far and landed so limp, they just thought it killed me. In a frenzy of fear, the crew took off, leaving Travis behind. A lot of people criticize these guys, you know, how come they didn't stop and save their friend? But, you know, I, I you know, we had no guns and, and you know, the, what are these guys going to do? You know, all they could do is maybe, you know, become victims themselves. So, you know, I really don't find fault with the fact that they, they took off. They just did what I probably would have done, you know. Though they knew they'd sound crazy, the loggers called the town sheriff and explained what had happened. The sheriff uh, interviewed the men. And he was very struck by the fact that the men were so shook up, you know, their faces were white, they were shaken, uh, you know, um, one of the guys was still crying, and uh, so they were convinced that something very serious had happened. Three of the loggers came back to the forest with the sheriff and other law enforcement officers later that same night, but no trace of Walton could be found. The next day, his disappearance launched a worldwide story and a massive hunt. There was over 50 men combing this area, four-wheel drives, uh, men on horseback. Uh, there were airplanes and helicopters crisscrossing the area. They even brought in tracking dogs. But after four days of fruitless searching, it became clear that no one knew where on earth or elsewhere Travis Walton was. Neither did Walton. When I came to... I was lying on my back on a hard surface, and I could see a light above me. I was thinking I was in a hospital. But Walton soon realized these doctors weren't human. When I finally got where my eyes could focus, I saw this creature standing over me. They were small, just a little over four feet tall. They had a mouth and, and a human arrangement of features, uh, and their features were small except for the eyes, and the eyes were huge. Another group of aliens then held Walton down and placed a mask over his face. That was the last thing I remember. I woke up lying face down on the cold pavement here in the dark, and uh, I could uh, see a light coming from above. I looked up to see this craft hovering there. You know, it was just there for a second when I looked, and it shot straight up and was gone from sight almost instantly. Walton found himself near the town of Heber, 30 miles from where he had been abducted. He stumbled into the deserted town and called his family from a payphone. When they arrived, Walton learned just how long he had been gone. I thought that this was the same night. They said, hey, feel your face. And I, I reached up and I had this, you know, five-day gro growth of beard. And I looked at the date on my watch, which was days beyond what it was supposed to be. And, and you know, that was just quite a shock to me. An international media circus soon descended on Snowflake, and it didn't take long before Walton's credibility was put on the line. Then came all these, you know, attacks, you know, claiming that I was hallucinating on drugs, that I'd, that I'd had a transitory psychosis, all that sort of thing. It just, just made it really doubly hard to uh, endure. The Fuhrer eventually died down, and life went back to normal for the residents of Snowflake. But not for Travis Walton. Constantly assailed by disbelievers and embraced by fans, he has found it almost impossible to move on with his life. A lot of people think, oh, you were chosen. But I don't like that. And uh, I prefer to think that, you know, I was in the wrong place at the wrong time and I did the wrong thing, getting too close. For the time being, Walton still doesn't have the answer to the most important question of all. I don't know where they came from and I don't know who, who they were. And all I know is what I experienced. So, you know, to me, they're, they're still a mystery. Coming up, accounts from Mexico describe a new and even more terrifying vision in the sky, flying humanoids. Some people think that these are bad aliens that are flying, trying to abduct people. And later, thousands witness an unidentified flying object in the Arizona sky. There were people that were shopping, going in and out of the malls, and they saw it. Um, there were people who were outside jogging, and they saw it.
Mexico's balmy breezes, vibrant culture, and delicious cuisine have made it one of the world's most popular vacation destinations. Whether touring the ancient Mayan ruins of the Yucatan or enjoying mariachi music in Mexico City, millions of people love to visit this beautiful country steeped in color and mysticism. Mexico is known as the land of wonders and mysteries, the land where the legend and reality become one. But over the past decade, it seems international travelers aren't the only ones flocking to Mexico. Mexico has received more UFO sightings than any other country on this planet. The first in a growing wave of sightings occurred on July 11, 1991, during a solar eclipse. People gathered in Mexico City, one of the most populous cities in the world, to watch this rare event in the sky. What they saw was even more startling. At that moment, when the eclipse began, the people were taping and suddenly a strange and unknown object appeared. They witnessed metallic objects, unidentified flying objects, appear in the sky just as the eclipse was taking place and remained in the sky as the eclipse was finishing. 17 different people in Mexico City from different vantage points filmed this event. The images that got caught on tape were so uh, spectacular, were so real, were so nitid, so explicit that we finally realized that we have uh, a very solid and important evidence with many witnesses from different places. From that day, the Mexican people realized that it was real. Since 1991, hundreds of UFO sightings have taken place across Mexico, many during the day. The military has gone from complete denial of these events to a more open position. The Mexican government, the authorities, the military, have uh, been uh, kind enough to talk about the phenomena, to give comments, to acknowledge that most of the incidents really took place, that they believe in the phenomena, they don't have still any explanation, then that's the truth. Since the UFOs never seemed to take any aggressive action, most Mexicans were delighted by their regular appearances. But that all changed on January 16, 2004, when a trembling young police officer told reporters he had been attacked by a flying creature in the city of Guadalupe. Realidad o fantasía, le tendremos la historia de un policía de Guadalupe que narra la supuesta aparición de una bruja. As he was patrolling the crime-ridden area in his car, the young officer claimed a figure dropped from a tree onto the road. At that moment, he stopped the car, the patrol car, and uh, he noticed something. This body was floating above the ground. He turned on his high beams for a better view. The creature then suddenly flew at the car, smashing repeatedly into the windshield. So he put the car in reverse, the patrol car in reverse, trying to run away. He has uh, by radio for backup. And this flying thing uh, was trying to grab her through the windshield. She, uh, she was uh, looking at him. It was very close. Terrified, the police officer raced backwards, hitting a wall and losing consciousness. Later, medical tests revealed that the officer had no drugs or alcohol in his system, but was in a deep state of shock. Psychological tests uh, revealed that uh, he was not suffering and has never suffered any kind of uh, hallucination or any kind of uh, psychological disorders. Many ufologists say that what attacked the officer is a new and frightening alien being called a flying humanoid. One amateur video even caught two flying humanoids in the air together. This was like a huge dark being with some kind of big huge cloak above this big uh, flying being was a winged entity. Suddenly, a smaller being is expelled from the big flying entity and fly away. And then that smaller entity returned and was absorbed by the bigger one.